Most people, when they hear the word commune, are probably imagining a bunch of scantily clad hippies on a farm. There's this idea that what income sharing or what a socialized economy means is giving everything you have to the collective. That's only half of the deal, right? You give everything you have to the collective, and the collective gives everything it has to you. That's the exchange. My name is G. Paul Blundell, and I came here two years ago to start organizing a commune here in the city. So we're here sitting at the idyllic temporary home of the first DC commune to come out of the Federation of Egalitarian Communities. We've got four adult members and three part-time children. All of the product of the labor of the members of the commune is pooled together and then the commune collectively decides what to do with all those resources. So we use the first floor as public space and we all live upstairs. The plan is, of course, ultimately to have a building that can accommodate each of us in a comfortable way. For the moment, as we're starting up, we're packing in more tightly. Our plan for the commune is to grow to at least 15 or 20 people before we calm down. I, I was making $27,000 a year and then I quit my job. <laughs> now I'm doing freelancing, and I have no idea what I'm actually going to be making. So right now I make 85000 which is, I have to say, below market. I think that a lot of people have a hard time feeling like their needs are met. We have, as a society, chosen to say, if you have money, then you're good. In fact, a lot of people who have a lot of money, their needs are not met. Unpaid labor is so important. I really hated feeling during my marriage that my work at home raising the children was not valued by my husband. For me to then have the same attitude, oh, well, you know, I'm working and making a lot of money in my job and Steve, like, you're just like picking up the kids after school and hanging out with them. That would be completely hypocritical. Me working as a handyman is worth, you know, whatever, $60 an hour. But me cooking meals for everybody is worthless, completely worthless, because it has no market valuation. And that's uh, an ideology we want to get away from. Income sharing is a hard thing. Um, when you come out of capitalism to, like, agree to share on that level, it's really emotionally hard for a lot of people. I've actually been um, a part of two different communes in Portland. There was definitely some personality conflicts um, and, and a lot of stress. That's sort of what fell apart for us. Out of our annual earnings, we're setting aside money that we're putting into savings accounts for each individual person. Our current expectation is that everybody will do 50 hours of community-valued labor per week, whether that be income-producing work or domestic work or administrative work. Right now, our food, we purchase it, or we actually do a lot of dumpster diving, food reclamation and rescue. Recently, there was a huge recall on uh, chicken fried rice. Like every grocery store in the nation basically was throwing out boxes. They all had like some chance of listeria outbreak. I think one or two people died nationwide. The irony of the listeria stuff that we got, it said on every package, please heat to 165, and listeria dies at 165. So they're basically telling you how to kill the listeria, but because there was like some chance that people might have gotten sick, they were throwing it out. I guess I'd met Steve, like I had known him for like three weeks and I realized, oh, man, I'm attracted to him. We realized in choosing to become romantic that we were taking a big risk. It could jeopardize a commune. I felt actually the reason that Steve and I got together is because we were both in love with the same thing. We're both in love with the idea of having this commune. This is Ash. The one yes. that I'm keeping filled college. I would prefer not to have to ask you three times to do that. So what's going to happen in the future to make that not happen? The kids totally love it. They're much better off with a whole tribe of people. It's actually quite funner that we have all these people living with us. Yeah, it's a lot funner. We live with fun people. Sorry for interrupting you, Mary. I really am not only in the best relationship I've ever been in, I have all this support to help me make it even better. Oh, thanks, darling. You're welcome. 
we talk a lot and we think a lot about trying to transform our relationship to money, but we're thinking and talking about money so that we don't have to think and talk about money. It's not feasible for us to just wave our arms and say, oh, we don't like money, like, let's banish money from our lives. We're doing all of this work so that worrying about money, stressing about money, is not so present in our lives. You can just make a choice to reorganize your life around compassion and solidarity and cooperation. Like, you don't have to wait for the rest of the world to come along to do that. 